Hello everyone, my name is Umar Ali and I'm the Data and Analytics Practice Lead at Bridgeall. Bridgeall are a Microsoft Gold partner for several competencies, including data analytics. I've been working at Bridgeall now for almost 10 years and over that time I've been the technical lead on several data and software projects. Today I'm going to be presenting an introduction to building a data analytics platform on Microsoft Azure. So with regards to the agenda, I'm going to start by setting the scene and talking about what a data analytics platform is and why you would want one. I'll then explain how you can build a data analytics platform on Microsoft Azure. This will be followed by a demonstration of Power BI, which is Microsoft's data visualization tool. And at the end, I'll let you know how to contact me if you have any questions. Before we go into what a data platform is, why would you want one? Every organization has data. Large organizations have data and so do small organizations. That data can be in CRM systems, custom applications, file shares, and even sitting on an employee's laptop. We've all heard about the benefits of data, but data is essentially worthless unless it's properly stored, modeled, and made accessible to users and other systems. Without the technology to bring all this data together into one easily accessible location, your data will just grow and grow and you'll never see the full benefit of it. And this is the problem that a data analytics platform solves. A data analytics platform is essentially the technology to bring data together and make it accessible to users and other systems. So what does a data analytics platform look like? These are the, the building blocks or layers of a data analytics platform. You have an ingestion layer, which connects to all your data sources and pulls data in and puts it into, into your storage layer. From your storage layer, it can be processed. And finally, that processed data can be modeled and served and made available to users and other systems. So what Azure services do you use to build a data analytics platform? Well, if you go on to Microsoft Azure's website and have a look at the services available to you, you'll be presented with something similar to this. The number of services on Azure can be overwhelming. There's well over 200 services there. So how do you know which services you need for a data analytics platform? What Microsoft have done for us is very kindly created reference architectures, which will give you an idea of the, the types of services you should use for your data analytics platform. And on screen here, what you can see is the the reference architecture for, for a data analytics platform. And you'll notice here is I've got all the all the different layers on screen. So the ingestion layer you can use Azure Data Factory to pull data in from your custom applications and any other system that you have within your organization that is stored using Microsoft's Azure Data Lake Storage service. That data can then be processed using Azure Databricks. And from there, you, you have a few different options in terms of how you model and, and serve that data. So from Azure Databricks, it can be exposed directly to tools like Power BI and even Microsoft Excel. If, however, you want to take that data that you've processed and mash it up with some other data that you're holding, you can 
use Azure Synapse Analytics and Analysis Services to mash that together and make it available to tools like Power BI. Or if you want to make it available for custom applications, you can drop that process data into Azure Cosmos DB. What I'm going to do now is just go through each of the services that I've mentioned in, in a bit more detail, just so you can get a flavour of their, their capabilities. Azure Data Factory is, is basically a, a data movement tool. You use it to bring all your structured, unstructured and semi-structured data into one central location. So that can be relational data, um, CSV files or JSON files, and even unstructured data such as images. The ingestion capabilities are very advanced. You get, at the time of speaking, there's over 90 built-in connectors that allow you to connect to the, the most popular SaaS services out there. You can construct both ETL and ELT processes. So, you know, as you extract the data, you can perform transforms on that data. And, you know, if you want, you can actually load it into your storage area and transform it from there. You can build code-free and code-centric processes using Azure Data Factory. So, you know, some developers might be more comfortable using code to build processes. So there is that option for them to do that, whereas others might prefer using the, the point and click interface. It's highly scalable and on a pay as you go model. So, you know, if you're processing data, let's say, or sorry, pulling in data, you know, once a week or once a month, you can switch on Data Factory pull all that data in and then you can scale back down or even even turn off data factory and you won't you won't be charged for it. Azure Data Lake is Microsoft's platform for single storage. You can store data of any size and shape on this. So you can store CSV files, relational data and also stuff like images which which are not structured it's highly secure and flexible when it comes to protection across data access and it's also reliable with geo replication by geo replication what what I basically mean is if you store data in a data lake that data gets replicated to multiple locations. So if the region that you're accessing the data from, for whatever reason, goes goes down or goes offline, you'll automatically be able to get that data from some of the other regions that it's been replicated to. It's also low cost. At the time of speaking, you can store a gigabyte of data for pennies. Azure Databricks is used for large scale data processing for batch and streaming workloads. You can build AI and analytics solutions using Databricks. It also has support for a range of languages. So if you're not familiar with any of the Microsoft languages, you can use Python, Scala, R, Java, SQL, and a number, a number of other languages to, to process that data. It's also got frameworks for data science, including TensorFlow and PyTorch. It's also worth mentioning that it integrates nicely with the Microsoft stack. And the reason that I've called that out is Databricks is a project that was found by another company and Microsoft have recently brought it into their ecosystem as well. 
So, you know, as part of bringing it in, they've done a lot of work around making sure it actually integrates well with all the the other services they have, such as Azure Data Lake. Azure Synapse Analytics, this was formerly known as SQL Data Warehouse. It, along with the data warehousing capability, it now also brings in features for data integration and big data analytics. It's got a massive parallel processing architecture behind the scenes, which allows it to do a lot of work really, really quickly. And like Azure Data Factory, it also scales on, on demand. So if you have a large bit of work to do once a month, then you can switch Azure Synapse Analytics on just before you want to do that work. You perform any processing you want to do, and you can then either scale scale down or switch it off and you won't, won't be charged. It integrates nicely with Azure Data Lake, so you can perform queries using Synapse on data that's sitting in Data Lake. You don't actually need to bring that data into the data warehouse. And it's also, also worth mentioning that there's advanced security and privacy features such as column and row level security available to users of Azure Synapse. Azure Analysis Services allows you to build enterprise grade data models in the in the cloud. You can use advanced mashup and modeling features in Azure Analysis Services to, to combine all your data. So for example, you might have data in a CRM system and also a data on a invoicing system using analysis services. You can take data from both locations, mash it up to give you a single view of that data. It provides an easier and faster way for users to perform ad hoc data analysis using tools such as Power BI and Excel. And it also allows you to take your, your data model and allow external users to access it so they can perform any analysis or make use of that, that data. Azure Cosmos DB is a very fast NoSQL database. On Microsoft's website, they, they mention it has single digit millisecond response times and 99.99% availability. Part of the, the reason for this high availability is just like Azure Data Lake, it has got multi-region data replication. So when you store data on Azure Cosmos DB, it will automatically create read-only copies in, in different regions. So then when you're accessing your data, if your primary region goes down, it will automatically pull data out from, from the other other regions and serve it back to you. One of the really good things about Azure Cosmos DB is it supports multiple languages and APIs. So if you're familiar with Java, .NET, Python, Node, and even JavaScript, there's SDKs available to, to interact with Azure Cosmos DB in those languages. And you know, you can use the SQL API, the MongoDB API. There's also the Graph API and there's several other APIs that you can use with Azure Cosmos DB. It's, it's also a multi-model database, so you can choose how you, how you want to store the data. That can be in key value pairs or it can be purely document based. And if you want, it can also be, also be graph based. Now we, we come on to the, the final piece of the data analytics platform Jigsaw, which is Power BI. Power BI is Microsoft's BI and data visualization tool that you can use to build dashboards and reports. It is super fast, so you can 
pull in millions of rows of of data and that can be visualized and, and filtered in in seconds you can also connect to over a hundred different types of data sources at the time of speaking and um, these can be both microsoft and non-microsoft products it does have built-in ai capabilities so in power bi you can do stuff like ask questions of your data and using the AI capabilities you'll be provided with answers and finally it's also worth mentioning that Power BI is mobile and tablet friendly so any reports or dashboards that you create using Power BI will be viewable on mobile and tablet devices without any any adjustment needed to the sizing or positioning of, of elements Now, what I'm going to do is give a short demonstration of Power BI to give you a flavour of the type of things that you can do with this data visualisation and analytics tool. What I have on screen here is a sales dashboard for a company that sells bikes. Using the, the company data and visualisations that Power BI offers, users can very quickly see what is happening in their company and why it's happening now power bi comes with several different types of visualizations that will allow you to spot trends and and take actions so you'll see see on screen here i've got a variety of different types of visualizations bar charts column charts donuts kpi cards and so on power bi is an interactive tool so when you hover over stuff or click into it you will see changes so you know using a hover over some of these so let's over over 2014 here so on the top left hand corner what i've got is a chart which shows the the sales by year if i hover over 2014 you'll see the in the tooltip the year appears along with the actual actual sales value and that appears on all the all the different types of charts here as well and you can see in this stacked chart you can hover over the the individual items in the stack and you'll see the different values so in this scenario here where i'm showing the sales by category and subcategory you know the whole the whole value relates to the category but the individual slices within this will show you what the what the value for the subcategory is you can also click on the elements so what i'll do is i'll, I'll click on japan and the sales by by region chart and what what this does is all the all the charts are linked by default when you click on an element within a chart it will update all the all the other charts so you now have, have two portions in, in every element one is highlighted and the other isn't and in this scenario where i've clicked on japan if i go to sales by year 2013 you'll see the value of the portion that's been highlighted and also the, the total value Like that you can also drill drill down into data so in my sales by region chart what i'll do is i'll turn on the on the drill down mode and if i click on 2013 it will break it into quarters and i can go all the way down to the the individual day level so some of that that stuff is pretty cool what you can also do is is filter the data so on the on the right hand side here what i've got is a couple of filters one which is a filter on here and the other on special offer so what i'll do is i'll, I'll click on 2012 here and again because all the all the charts are are linked they all they all get updated a couple of interesting visualizations that power bi offers 
are the ask a question about your data visualization, which makes use of the AI capability that Power BI has. So in here, I can ask a question about the about the data and I'll get an answer. So I'll ask sales in 2013 and if I enter, I'll get a value in here which shows me the the answer to the to the question that I've asked. I can enhance this question by saying, you know, something like in Italy. And again, the, the value gets updated based on, on the question you've added. This can be, be quite complex. So, you know, you can keep adding to this and add, ask stuff like, you know, if sales in 2013 that happened in Italy for the for the category bikes and all this will be will be updated. One of the other interesting visualizations that Power BI gives is a map tool. So on this map you can see the sales by by region and it's displayed as bubbles on the map. So the bigger the bubble the larger the, the number of sales in that region. So here you can see Japan has more sales than let's say you know Mexico. Yeah. So that's that's another interesting way of visualizing your data. And again, like all the other charts, if you actually click on one of these, the the linked charts on screen will will also be, be updated. Now, the the kind of two two dashboards that I've shown you are linked to a data set which has got millions of rows of data in it. So you you know you've been able to see how quickly Power BI can filter data and also provide you with actual values. So that's just something to keep in mind. Is Power BI is super quick even with millions and millions of rows, rows of data. Power BI is also a tool that, you know, it doesn't need to just be technical people that use Power BI. Users who are familiar with tools like Excel will pick this up really quickly. And to demonstrate that, what I'm going to do is create a, a new visualization just to show you how, how simple it is. So I'll go for a bar chart in this scenario. And, you know, let's let's say we want to show sales by region. So I'll open this here and I'll drop on the access name. If I go into the sales order table, what I'll do is I'll drop on the value of, of sales and you can see how quickly I've been able to bring that visualization onto screen. And if if you're not happy with this type of chart, it can very easily be changed by just clicking on one of the one of the other items. So, you know, if you wanted it in column format, you can just do that. You have various options here including you know, pie charts and, and donuts as well. And again, all the all the tool tips and stuff are, are automatically added, added by Power BI. In terms of how you how you go about getting data into Power BI, there's a get data tab here, which I click that and the, the more button. You'll see there's a a wide range of services that you can connect to and pull pull data from. You know, there's on-premise and cloud-based services here, and it's a mix of Microsoft and non-Microsoft services that are here. Again, like I mentioned in my slide deck, Power BI is mobile and tablet friendly so if you viewed this on a mobile device or a tablet device 
then the screen would automatically readjust so everything everything fits on. You can also very easily change the, the design of your dashboards. So if I go into the, the view tab here and you know let's say you wanted something a bit more funky like this here you know with with one click this gets updated and you can play about with the the different themes to to choose something that you feel aligns with your your branding just go back to classic mode you do get uh, a number of different options with power bi when it comes to building reports and viewing them so you get power bi desktop which is the free version of Power BI. If you want to share your reports with others, what you can do is put these onto a web portal. The Power BI portal is what it's called. And from there, it can be shared and users can make, make changes to it. That has got a cost attached to it. And at the time of speaking, it's something like $10 per per user per month. These dashboards can also be embedded into custom applications. So you know you can, you can design your your dashboard or report using Power BI desktop and make it available to your, your custom applications. And that that kind of concludes the the Power BI presentation. So to summarize, building a data analytics platform on Microsoft Azure needs careful consideration and design. You want to make sure you are using the, the right services. Microsoft have provided some reference architectures on their website. And for most organizations, they should be able to use these as a starting point for building their own data analytics platform. It's also worth mentioning that I only covered the main Azure services that you would use in a data analytics platform. You do get other services, so it's worth going to Microsoft Azure's website, checking these out to see what these services do and what, what benefits they could bring. That concludes the presentation. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you have any questions, then you can email me or connect with me on LinkedIn.